you know, one of the one of the exciting things about having lead here, you know, you you watch his content mm-hmm. and you can easily see you're not afraid to talk about whatever topics that come across your way. Right. 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 Um, and you know, we chat a little bit. We you had, we were talking about the passport bro situation. Yeah. Right? You and, know, and and I don't know. Do a lot of your followers know that you speak Spanish? Yeah, they do. You know, Passport Bros is pretty big in in the space that I'm in on YouTube. I have a lot of uh, black men and a lot of black women that follow me. But Passport Bros right now for black men in our community, I mean, it's a very big topic. A lot of black men are not satisfied with their dating options. They think that these women are, are, are too hard to get. They're requiring too much. Maybe they're a little bit too masculine. And then when they travel, they experience a different type of woman. And both of y'all are well-traveled, and y'all know that, you know, cultures are different. Women are the same, but they're different, too, because they're in different cultures. Mannerisms are different. Uh, How they act with men, how they relate to men is different. And so when you get out of the United States for the first time and you get this taste of other women or, or how other women can be, I mean, it's just an experience that these men will never forget. <clears throat> well, you know, I, I, all my life, I've never dated a black woman. Like, I have no, I don't discriminate at all, mm-hmm. right? But as far as a relationship, I've never had a relationship with a black woman. And I was just curious uh, on your take. So, coming from a Hispanic Latino background, it's, it's known within the culture that tip, a typical traditional Hispanic woman will cater to you, right? So... You know, you come you come home from work. She's gonna have dinner ready for you. I, you know, I had an ex sister in law, three kids, worked a full time job. Husband's in the house by the time she gets home, and guess what? She got in the kitchen and she cooked food for the entire family after a full day of work, right? And so, you know, I'm just curious: is that in the in the black community, African American community, what, what is the the traditional structure? of the female relationship, how they act, how they treat their men. What, what is that kind of background like? Yeah, I think it used to be that way. But, you know, in 2023, a lot of young men are finding that it's just not that way anymore. Uh, young men in their 20s, early 30s, uh, it's, it's really kind of like being in a relationship with, you know, two of the same kind. So no one is really taking on any specific gender roles. Everybody's working, no one's really saying, okay, it's your job to cook or it's your job to clean. Now, of course, as the man, it always falls on us to pay the majority of the bills, but then when you look at the other side, that expectation really isn't there. If you can get the mic a little closer, please. Oh, okay, I got you. There you go, appreciate it, go ahead. (laughs) Thank you for letting me know that. No problem. (laughs) Y'all, I mean, this is real nice. I'm not using these microphones like that or anything. Because yeah. you're dropping gems right now, so we yes. want to make sure they can hear you. We catch uh, everything. I appreciate that. So, yeah, the, um, the expectation really isn't there. But when you go to other cultures and you see how different women are, it is eye-opening. I remember the very first time I went to Mexico, and I had taken this girl. We were at, like, lunch or something in just a little restaurant, and I ordered this, uh, you can say this pitcher of uh, watermelon juice. And she brings the, the waitress brings the pitcher and I pour myself uh, some watermelon juice. And right when I pour it, the girl kind of grabs my hand because I already poured it and she took a straw and just put it in there for me. And then as I drunk it, she would refill my drink. Ding, 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 ding. Like, and wow. you're like, what the hell? Is, I've never had a woman <laughs> in the States, you know, refill my drink or be so attentive to, you know, uh, unwrap my straw and put it in there for me. And, and it's the little things. A lot of times women think men really desire these huge, right. big, um, you know, displays of love, but they don't really realize sometimes it's just the little things like that that'll really help a man feel like a man, especially if he's doing his part anyway, you know, being respectful, paying the bills, stuff like that, you know, the typical nice guys type stuff. Jimmy, Jimmy and ha- you dated, I take it, mostly Latinas? Mostly Latinas, but I have dated black, uh, black girls before. Did you see a difference? Um, I did. Okay. Um, so Latinas are definitely a little more attentive. Um, they definitely are on top of making sure that their man or their boyfriend has 
you know, everything that they need or want. Um, and not that the African American woman didn't wasn't like that to an, uh, to an extent. Um, but it, I, I noticed there was a little bit more. Um, the, the difference that I noticed mainly when I was when I did it, a black girl was more. She was a, more loud mouth than the Latina was. And I know Latinas could be spicy, but she was a little bit more loud mouth, like more in your face whenever there's an issue. A little bit more aggressive, combative. You know what I mean? Not as the, the easiest way to put it. The Latina was more agreeable than the African American woman. She was not as agreeable. She was more on on the combative, on the defense or aggressive type of um, demeanor. Um, so I think that would be the difference that I noticed the most. Now, obviously, I haven't dated every black woman in the world, but the ones that I have, I've dated like three in my life, and all of them were not as agreeable as as the Latina women that I've that I've dated. Well, I mean, talking about passport bros, like, mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't, I don't know. I was I don't consider myself an ex a ex passport bro because I'm I'm married, right? But I did travel and I did notice like, man, for the money you make in the States, especially when we're talking about Latin American countries, you know, you, you're talking about Colombia or Dominican Republic or El Salvador, or, you know, any of these countries, you show up, you know, uh, two, three thousand dollars a month in those countries is significant income. Yes. And it's just kind of here in the States. If you make significant money in the states, it opens more opportunities for the type of females that you have access to. But yeah. over there, it's a different vibe. Like if you show up and you can take a girl that would never have the opportunity to go to these places or get on a boat or do these things, she's going to treat you like a king. Like it just it just works out that way. So he is, you know, for 300 bucks on Delta with some Sky Miles, you're in Colombia and you spend a G for a weekend and you can have the most amazing time yep. that if you go to Miami, it's going to cost you six, seven, eight, nine thousand dollars to have that same experience. And it's going to be a lesser experience. That's the thing, because say say you're a basketball player. I think Gilbert Arenas, ex-basketball player, he was just talking about why it's better, at least for him, just to pay for it than it is to like get in these relationships. If you are a, a basketball player and let's just say you're willing to spend tons of money on a woman, well, that opens up your options in terms of how the woman looks, but it doesn't really make her more feminine right Right. she might look more feminine but is she going to do the little details now that you're spending all this money than than if you were making less and and got a less attractive woman it really the your amount of money it seems it'll it'll increase the the options that you have in terms of a woman's attractiveness but it's really hard to buy that femininity right because Let's say you get a, a, a nice little 28-year-old, if you're Gilbert Arenas, and you've got her on the yacht. She's looking great, but is she She still wants to be pampered. She still wants you to take her on the nice dinners, you know, buy her the nice dress, the nice shoes. You're like, when does the femininity come in? She's like, well, I'm going to give you some ass, but what does that have to do with, <laughs> right. you know, putting the straw in For sure. and exactly. refilling your drink, exactly. right? So when you go to another country, it will open up options that even if you had tons of money in the states, you couldn't get because they have a, a different level of, I don't want to say femininity, but they're just, their culture, their upbringing is much different. They ca- really cater to them. The, ca- really the cater, that, you 100%. know, uh, I've had scenario. I'm dog sick. And guess what? She's called out of work well, and she's by your side taking care of you. And like, it might've been the beginning of the relationship, but man, she took care of me from eight o'clock in the morning, twelve o'clock at night, and before I knew, I was like, "Oh, this well, is something different right here." I think mm-hmm. feminism is the cause mm-hmm. of that in America. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Do you think that feminism is what caused the women catering to men situation to literally not be really existent here? Yeah, I think it's a part of it. I think another huge part is just that women have more options in the workforce. Uh, women in college are doing better than the men. Women in post-grad are doing better than men. And it's not like they need a man like they needed the man in the 40s and 50s and 60s. So a lot of times as men, we want to look back 
into yesteryear and say, oh, well, I want a relationship like that that maybe my, my parents had or, you know, leave it to Beaver and all that. But if we're honest, a lot of times there was dependency in those. Mm -hmm. And really the dependency was kind of both sides because women had their gender roles in terms of washing and cooking and cleaning. A lot of men in those times, they didn't know how to do anything for themselves. Mm -hmm. They knew how to work. But they didn't know how to cook for themselves. Mm -hmm. They didn't know how to iron. And so both genders needed each other. Right. Nowadays, 2023, mm -hmm. you know, here in Atlanta, you get a black girl, man. She's making $117,000. She's buying, you know, she's driving around the little C-class. Mm -hmm. <laughs>